Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utgoff of the United States Naval Academy, and in this video, we will look at rock, paper, scissors, and matching pennies. We will see that in both of these games, neither iterated elimination nor underlining best responses finds a Nash equilibrium. We still haven't found a Nash equilibrium in our very first example of a static game of complete information, rock, paper, scissors. In this video, we'll try to find a Nash equilibrium of rock, paper, scissors. We'll underline best responses and see that it's not clear what that Nash equilibrium looks like. Rock, paper, scissors may seem like a way to decide who goes first in some other, more interesting game, but it is a game of life and death out in nature. I'm forever grateful to Chris Griffin of Penn State for pointing out to me Cinervo and Lively's 1996 paper in Nature, which documents that rock, paper, scissors is a pretty good model for the mating patterns and resultant cycle of side blotched lizard colors. Lest you think that the lizards are the only ones who take rock, paper, scissors seriously, I also refer you to the World Rock, Paper, Scissors Association, linked in the description box below. Rock, paper, scissors is a serious, serious game. Here's a matrix version of rock, paper, scissors. In this matrix, a payoff of one indicates a win, a payoff of minus one indicates a loss, and a payoff of zero indicates a draw. Rock, paper, scissors is an example of what's known as a zero sum game, since the payoffs in each square sum to zero. Here's the matrix with all of the best responses underlined. A quick check reveals that there are no squares with both payoffs underlined. If we are going to find a Nash equilibrium in rock, paper, scissors, we need to expand our notion of strategies. Before we attempt a Nash equilibrium in rock, paper, scissors, we'll tackle a smaller game, matching pennies. Players one and two simultaneously and independently select heads or tails. If they select the same thing, player one gets one and player two gets minus one. If they select different things, player one gets minus one and player two gets one. Player one wins when the pennies match and player two wins if the pennies don't. Now, this game may seem even less serious than rock, paper, scissors, but it's important if you want to study people, or submarines, who want to find people, or submarines, who don't want to be found. Here's an application, perhaps closer to home. Take a trip with me back to 1937 or so, and let's suppose there is a purely hypothetical midshipman who is not presently allowed off the yard, and his purely hypothetical future wife is in Annapolis, and they purely hypothetically want to go to dinner in town. The plan is that my future aunt will get my future uncle from the Naval Academy and drive him off the yard for dinner. They just need to sneak him past the sentry at the gate. He can hide in either the trunk or under blankets in the back seat. The sentry will check one of the hiding places. Underlining best responses again reveals that there are no squares with both payoffs underlined. The same problem of no apparent Nash equilibrium emerges again, so we're not prepared yet to answer the question, how will economic agents play this game? Thanks so much for watching this video about rock, paper, scissors, matching pennies, and cautionary tales about purely hypothetical midshipmen. In the next video, we'll introduce mixed strategies, which will allow us to make sense of Nash equilibrium in rock, paper, scissors, matching pennies, and many other games.